This is the Cameroon Red Hysterocrates gigas. This is a baboon species from Africa. Winter rehouse, this one, from its old container into this new one. And it has dug a burrow in here. I've removed the piece of cork bark and put it in the new enclosure. And I have a catch cup over here and I'm going to try to corral it to go up into the catch cup. So let's see how that goes. I can see that I filled in the tunnel in the corner and I can see the feet over here. There it is. An even better thing to do in this situation is use a square catch cup because then it will fill in the corner. Now there aren't any gaps. twisted so that it's not sharp. And I can go down in there. Okay, we got stubbornness. Spolter stubborn. Slip down in here. Get behind them. As you can see, coming out. We are pretty much in the catch cup. There we go. Kind of up in the corner there. Right in here. Pull this up. And there we have it. Look at that beautiful tarantula. Ooh. This is, again, this is my H. Gigas Cameroon Red Baboon. I just felt it was getting a little big for this enclosure. I mean, it probably could have stayed in here a while longer, but I, um, if you've been watching my videos, I do tend to move my tarantulas into bigger enclosures as soon as I can. They all seem to be doing well with that and happy about it, so I've seen no problems. Now I have that beautiful one in its catch cup, and I'm going to take a little bit of its webbing out of here. And I'm going to put it around the entrance to this burrow. And I'm going to toss out this old substrate. You know, there's a good starter burrow down there, a nice deep hole, and this one really likes to dig and tunnel. It likes to come out and stand on the top, but usually when I come around or into the room, it runs away. There's also dwarf white isopods in here. This one looks really good health-wise. Now, just get them to walk out. There we go. Get a little, <laughs> just can't help those reflexes, even if I'm trying to be really calm. Okay, so you see there's a little bit of a defense posture there, like who touched me? I am not sure about this. All right, little one. Get down into your hole. You. I know, you're giving me some threat posture. You're being very nice about it though. Very nice, yeah. You're just being like a really calm wave. So now I think I can probably pull this other enclosure. 
pebble away. And, oh, <laughs> of course, a leaf has to spring into the picture and scare the shit out of them. Oops, I said shit. Oops, I said shit. So we see a little bit of posturing there, but you know, I'd say that this one was really calm. Beautiful. So I'm string a little bit of web there. It just tells me that uh, the little one's a little unsure of his new surroundings. Kind of a rude wake up. You're just having your afternoon slumber and someone comes along and digs you out of bed, basically pulls your whole blankets out with you tugging along with them and throws you into some unfamiliar place. But this enclosure will be much better for this little one and uh, we'll be able to grow in here, make a new home. It's already got this nice deep starter burrow. You can see how he or she is moving just so cautiously. So cautiously. It really just tells me that uh, the tarantula is afraid. It really just wants to say, hey, I'm harmless. I'll leave you alone if you leave me alone. And I'm just going to duck out of here like this and uh, just slowly disappear. We'll just be friends, okay? Just makes me so happy. This is my new home. I'm already getting, already getting his little butt fingers out. Laying down a little bit of web there. Next to the new enclosure, it's a pretty large critter keeper. Um, you can see the old one right, uh, right here. So that's a big. Big difference, and this one outgrew its enclosure pretty quickly. I got it uh, in September, and now it's um, end of December. So you know, two and a half, three months was maybe an inch, and it's grown quite a bit. So I would have to say it's probably a faster grower than the uh, Pelanobius muticus or king baboon. I do have a king baboon, but I didn't raise it from a sling, so I wouldn't be able to really tell you, but I've heard they're really slow growers, and I wouldn't call this one a really slow slow grower. I wanted to show you a little bit of what's going on down in the burrow if I can. Um, get the light down there. There we go, there's a little bum down there, and we were just doing some webbing. This one's probably gonna molt not too distant future. I don't think it's exactly in pre molt yet, but getting close. It's got a nice nice area down there. There's a piece of cork bark um, right along the top here where I'm shining the light and it's just covered up with some dirt and it was the same bark that was in its other enclosure. But it'll work out well. You can see the carapace and the abdomen right there. Probably wants me to go away you how I went to put the lid on and this one turned around and has decided that it's definitely going to defend this new home and, and you can see the two little eyes there um, glowing, the two largest eyes glowing um, from the light and uh, just a moment ago we could only see the carapace and the, and the abdomen but now you can see the tarantula's face. And there we are, right at the entrance ready to give me a threat posture, um, albeit a kind of mild one, as you could see. Didn't get anything big, but how cute. Bravo! Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch you next time.